Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 9.0, and today is day 29. So historically, when I do these trainings, I do my best to go applet by applet by applet from top to bottom on our left-hand side here. This time around, I wanted to change things up slightly. We're going to dive into designs. The reason being is that campaigns is up next in our order, and yet many of our campaigns that we utilize can benefit from designs that you created inside of command. So I figured we would teach you how to use the designs applet first. That way, when we go into campaigns, we'll already have some items that we can actually put to use inside of campaigns. So let's go ahead and skip ahead. We're gonna go down to our ninth icon down, our designs applet, the paintbrush and palette icon. And when we do, this is actually my command account. Um, and you can see I've already got several designs that have been created. In fact, I've got down here at the bottom, you can see 119 different designs that I've created. At the top, I can search for a specific design by name. I can also filter to just show me my email or social or print or video, and I can click one or more of all of these to just show me those specific design types on my screen here. I can also reorder my designs old to new, new to old, right? Depending on which way I want to see those. Right now I've got sort of a tile view on my screen, but I can choose to look at those as a list view. You can see what those look like. The thumbnails get a little bit smaller, but you get a little bit more details as far as that goes. And then at the bottom, just as a heads up, similar to how we do it in contacts, I've got one through 10 of 119, but I can see up to 20 at one time. I would still need to rotate through page by page by page, um, but you can kind of get a, an idea of how many you've got going on on the screen there. Now with all things command, we do know that we need to click on the blue green button at the top right hand corner if we wanna start something new. Designs is no different. I'm gonna click on create design and you're gonna see the four main design types that we do have available. So we've got email, social, print, and video. We're gonna start with video. It's a little out of order, but it's a pretty simple uh, design type that we can get done in just this video. So I'm gonna click there and choose next. What this is going to do is allow me to create a neighborhood marketing video. It's about a minute long. It's set to music. It's got some animations in it um, and it's pretty short and sweet. So I'm gonna put in my neighborhood. Now remember, these are best uh, based upon the Nextdoor neighborhoods, the partnership we have with Nextdoor. If you don't have a Nextdoor neighborhood or it's not listed, just pick any neighborhood. You're gonna be able to change the data on the next screen. So I'm gonna choose my neighborhood and then we're gonna get this list. So here's where that name shows up, right? So let's say you didn't have a Nextdoor neighborhood, just choose the falls and then you can go in and actually change the name of the neighborhood, right? Um, I'm actually gonna put in a the. All right, so the falls at Green Meadows. And then you can see that it's pulling all of this data from the MLS, right? So the average home price, average price per square foot, number of homes currently for sale, average days on market, and then whether the average home prices are on the rise, on the decline, or holding steady, and then the same thing with price per square foot. Uh, one thing I've never understood is how home prices can be rising while price per square foot is holding steady. For me, I think that those should probably be the same. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and choose on the rise there. What I would most likely do personally is go pull this data from my MLS. I would probably do some sort of comparative market analysis for the neighborhood, choose a source like that just to trust and yet verify. And again, any of these boxes are completely editable. Next up, we've got some neighborhood features. Uh, these are being pulled from a different data source that recognizes something like 100, and 100 or so, I don't know, 80 plus uh, different neighborhood features. You can see all of those neighborhood features in this list when you click on the dropdown. And these neighborhood features have different animations when we go to the video. Um, so I'm gonna change out um, athleisure wear for outdoorsy because we have a lot of walking trails and lakes um, and places to fish and things like that in the neighborhood. I'm gonna change out historic. Um, let's go into, and again, you can kind of go through and choose which ones. I think friendly community is always a pretty safe one. I'm gonna choose not vehicle enthusiasts. That sounds like we're gonna have a lot of cars parked all over the neighborhood. Maybe not the best thing for your neighborhood depending on how you feel about that but then you can go in and kind of see all of the different setups. Um, and let 
let's just say, uh, why don't we go with wine lovers? That's always a fun one, right? So you can choose what these neighborhood features are for your information. Uh, next up, you've got the agent information. So you've got your headshot, first and last name, job title, email, phone number. Make sure that all of that is entered correctly and accurately for yourself. And then it's gonna pull up your market center brokerage information as well. Uh, make sure all of that looks good. And then I'm gonna click on next. And what it's gonna do is take about 10 seconds to create this short and sweet neighborhood marketing video. Again, there's not a lot of editing that you can do with the video. However, if you're not posting anything to your neighborhood marketing or your socials right now, and you're just looking for something to generate activity, this is a really short and sweet way to make that happen. So you can see the video is now ready. I'm gonna go ahead and click on play so you can see that video. All right, so, and a lot of that was a little bit granulated, if you can see right there. It actually shows up a lot better when you download it. So I'm gonna click on save. And now I've got a new asset ready to go inside of my library. So I can click on it. It's going to show me all of the information, right? I can click on play again if I wanted to do it. Then I can download the video. And now that's gonna be saved as an MP4 right and I could go and I would probably run a rename this video inside of my file explorer and then I could upload that to my socials I could put it on YouTube wherever I want to start generating interest and you know conversations around what's happening in the market for that specific neighborhood by the way you can do this multiple times so I just created one for the falls but maybe I want to create one for nearby neighborhoods right and post about those neighborhoods maybe I'm going to post one a week for the next four weeks Right? There's a lot of different ways that you can utilize this design tool. And again, it's, it's basic, but it's simple. Right, So many of you are creating much more complex videos with cuts and different music and different stats. And you're using video of yourself walking through the neighborhood. I love all of that. But that does take time and effort and a budget. And if you're just new or you're looking for something short, sweet, and simple, this video design is one that can be done. You saw this done in a matter of minutes and now ready for posting. So that's it for today, guys. A basic introduction to designs and then the video design asset for your neighborhood marketing video. As always, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll look forward to speaking with you again real soon.